triumph, tribulation, tinsel. Now we begin a story set in the dark pit of a metropolis and follow one cunning detective as he journeys into the underbelly of Christmas crimes. View discretion is advised. In the holiday justice system, Christmas-based offenses are considered especially naughty. In this city, the dedicated detectives who investigate these vicious crimes are members of an elite squad known as the Christmas Crimes Unit. These are their stories. My name is John Henry Holliday. I'm a detective in the Christmas Crimes Unit. I catch the most heinous of seasonal criminals, and I'm good at it. It's my gift. It was a cold December, bleak, middle of winter, not long until the most important day of the year, Christmas, and it looked like it was going to be a white one. White, except for the blood splattered across Mrs. Johnson's front yard. I arrived on the scene just as CSI was finishing up. What do we got? It's cold worthy work, sir. She was stabbed 12 times in the back and thrown from the second story window. Real messy stuff. Murder weapon? Melted. Melted? Melted, sir. It was an icicle. Damn. Was anything stolen? Nothing. Also, there's no sign of forced entry. Hmm. Did anyone see anything? No real witnesses. Just Jehovah's. Damn. Messy indeed. Who would kill old Mrs. Johnson? She was a nice lady. Sure, she didn't celebrate Christmas, but you can't just go around stabbing every Jew you meet. That's right, sir. All right. I'll get to work on this. Let me know if anything else comes up. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I went back to the station to start my investigation. When I walked into the office, there was a woman standing at my desk. She was tall, blonde, eyes like Christmas lights. When she spoke, she had the voice of a pubescent boy. Definitely a Caroline. Hello, Mr. Holliday. My name is Sandy Baum. Detective Holliday. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Baum. What can I do for you? I need to report a missing person. A goy I worked the corners with downtown didn't come back after visiting a client. I'm scared something might have happened to her. I'm sorry to hear that. It's a dangerous life out there for a milking maid, but I don't need to tell you that. Mm. This missing girl, what's her name? What does she look like, and where did you last see her? Her name is Joanna Bing. She goes by Jingle. She's a tall, very pretty redhead with 32 Ds. We were working on the corner of 74th and 3rd. Some big guy pulled up. She got into his sleigh, and that was the last I seen of her. Can you describe his sleigh? It was big, red, and flew through the sky. Was it horse-powered? Donkey-powered? No. No. I think they were reindeer. Reindeer? Tell me, did this man have a large white beard? Yeah. A red hat? Yeah. And a cobra tattooed on his face? Yeah, now that you mention it. Thank you, Miss Baum. That's all we need. I'll be sure to get in touch if anything comes up. Thank you very much, Mr. Holiday. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I knew exactly who this man was. I'd been waiting for him to rear his head for six years. His name was Santa Claus, a.k.a. Saint Nick, a.k.a. Father Christmas, a.k.a. Tony the Hammer. We had a history. Six years ago, my partner and I stumbled onto a child trafficking ring. One night, we got a tip that some children were down at the docks about to be smuggled out of the country. My partner and I had to act immediately. We raced to the docks and took position. My partner was Detective Tanner Jim Mainson. He was a good detective. There they are, John. All those poor little children on these docks ready to be shipped off to the Chinese black market on a boat. That's exactly right, if not somewhat expository. Here's what we'll do. You take the right side, I'll take the left. There's not many guards. We can take him with the element of surprise. Okay. I'm ready, John. On three. One, two, three. Police, don't move! Put your hands up. Put them up! But in that moment, nothing happened. They just looked at us. Then I had a closer look at the children. They were wearing funny little shoes and hats. They weren't children at all. These aren't children. They're elves. It's a setup. Get them! Hey, now! Taste my sugar plum man! Tana! Tana, where are you? Over here. It's gonna be okay, Tana. You stay with me. Backup's on the way. John, 
I don't think I'm gonna make it. I got shot in the chest, just below the left nipple, and I'm bleeding a lot. These damn elves ambushed us, John. I have a wife and baby son. I'll never see her grow up and get married. You catch the bastard that's responsible for this. That killed me. Ugh. A father and husband and Christmas crimes detective. He died as he lived. Uh... He died as he lived. In my arms, spouting exposition. It was in that moment I vowed to catch the man who killed my partner, my closest friend. The man with the fluffy white beard of pain and the red hat of suffering. The man who set up an ambush with elves because he knew we were getting too close. The man who... (laughs) Well, who's expository now? That was six years ago, and now I have a chance to bring Santa to justice. Old dead Mrs. Johnson was gonna have to wait. I went straight to the chief. Chief, he's back. That bastard Saint Nick the Dick is back. Jesus, Holiday. That's right. Christmas. And I got a whiff of the worst Christmas criminal. Wait, what are you talking about? A milkmaid came in today, gave a description of a man that matches Santa. We finally got a lead, Chief. Holiday, we've been over this, haven't we? You can't just keep reopening a case every time a fat guy picks up a hooker. Or a jolly man with a beard flees the scene of a crime. He's a spook. A specter. For all we know, Santa's not even real. He is real, damn it. He killed Tana! Look, I know you lost your partner, and I can't imagine what that's like. I've only ever lost my keys and my wife. Why don't you take some time off? Get your head straight. Dead old stad Mrs. Johnson will be waiting for you when you get back. But Chief, this is the- John! Drop it! This Santa case is a waste of resources. It's been cold for years. If you don't want to take time off, that's fine. But this case is done. You will not pursue it any further. That's an order. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This was a strong lead, and I had to follow it. Forget the chief. I was going to do this with or without the approval of the department. Miss Baum, the woman who reported her fellow milking maid missing, mentioned the sleigh was powered by reindeer the seediest of ungulates. And if you want to know anything about anything seedy, there's one place you gotta go. I headed down to the red and green light district to see if I could scrape up any information. I spent all night talking to the scruffiest people in the city with no word of reindeer or Santa. But eventually, I got lucky. Excuse me, sir. What are you doing out here? Just making a living. Hey, you want to buy some cane? No, sir. You know as well as I do that Colombian candy is illegal, and I'm with the Christmas Crimes Unit. Ah, man. Don't worry. I'm not here to bust you. I just want to know if you've heard anything about Santa. Who? Father Christmas? Not ringing a bell. Chris the Crippler Kringle? Oh, yeah. Crip Kringle. I heard he's back in town, but that's about it. What about reindeer? Seen any of them around? Oh, yeah. At the North Pole. The strip club on 73rd? Yeah, that's the one. Are we done here? Yeah. Thanks for the help. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Not yet. The North Pole Strip Club was on 73rd, a block from where Jingle the Milkmaid was last seen. I went down to check it out. As soon as I walked in, I saw an old face from the past. Standing at a table, hoof wrapped around a glass of gin, antlers almost touching the ceiling. On either side of him were a couple of fine-looking does. He was a former accomplice of Santa's. It was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Rapist. Hello, Rudolph. Long time no see. Well, look what the cat dragged in. Who is this, Rudy? Is he a friend of yours? Ladies, this is Mr. John Henry Holiday. Detective. This is the man that put me behind bars. Oh, no. Not a friend at all. I'm not here to cause you problems, Rudolph. Besides, we both know who you really went to jail on account of. Ladies... Could you excuse the detective and I? You're excused. (laughs) Why don't you go get a drink? We won't be long. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you, detective. Ooh, I tell you, they're lookers, but they got nothing going on beneath those antlers. 
Anyway, what do you want, Holiday? I need some information. Look, I spent eight years in jail for you-know-who. I don't play those reindeer games no more. I've gone straight. I run this club, I do an honest day's work, and I go about my life. I'm glad to hear that. Now, why don't you tell me what you know about Santa? Like I said, I'm out. I don't know nothing. Do you hear what I hear? What's that? A liar. What else can I say? I'm a working buck now. Rudolph, with your lips so tight. Don't you lie this way tonight. You are in the inner circle. Not anymore. You're wasting your time, detective. I see that. Well, how about this, working buck? You got some fawns over there drinking in the corner. I know they're not of age. Speaking of drinking, your liquor license looks pretty fishy. Did you print that up yourself? I can see hoof prints all over it. It's obviously a forgery. John, you're busting my balls. Busting your balls? I'm going to bust you right now if you don't start talking. Why don't I go take a look in that back room there? See what kind of operation you're really running. Okay, I get it. I get it. Look, if I help you, will you leave me and my businesses alone? You have my word. You won't have any trouble from me. All right. So listen up. I only tell you this once. Fat boy's doing business with the chinks again. This time he's selling girls, John. I lost two to him last month. Two tall, gorgeous does. Ginger fur, great tail. He picks them up, ships them off. It's dirty. Even for me, that ain't right. Gingers, you say? Man's got a type. Where's his operation? Where does he do business? I don't know exactly where he is, but you should check out the Ho Ho Hotel. It's run by the Chinese, and somebody there will know where he is. Now listen, you leave my name out of this. I haven't seen Santa in years, and I like to keep it that way. I don't need him coming down the chimney and blowing my head off. Do you understand? Thank you, Rudolph. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, John. I had a plan. I hopped in my car, went to the corner store to pick up some supplies, and drove to the hotel. When I walked in, there was an old Chinese woman at the front desk. I got a room for the night, made sure to give her my name. I got to my room and waited. If this place was connected to Santa, they were going to send someone over to see me and I know exactly who they'd send. It didn't take long before there was a knock at the door, and in walked an average-looking man in almost every respect. He was white, little black eyes, eight feet tall, wore a top hat, had sticks for arms, and was made of snow. Couldn't pick him out of a crowd. Hello, Mr. Holiday. Detective Holiday. Never thought I'd see the day Frosty the Hitman showed up at my door. I suppose you know why I'm here. Word on the street is you've been poking around asking too many questions. You know that? I do. And I got some answers. Selling girls overseas? That's a sick bird of prey. Illegal. You know we can't let you do that. You seem to know a lot. Well, you know what's going to happen now? I'm going to kill you, detective. Actually, let me tell you something. I put a combination lock on that door there, and when you shut it behind you, you locked yourself in. The phone line's cut. The window's too small to get out. You're locked in here with me, Popsicle. And I'm the only one that knows the combination. Now why would you do that, Holiday? Well, see, I told the woman at the front desk that I was from Florida. Wasn't used to all this cold. I made sure she turned the temperature up in this room. All the way up. You're bluffing. Am I? Let's wait and find out. It's getting warm, water boy. I swear, I will kill you, Holiday. And you'll kill yourself. They'll find my body and a damp carpet. What do you want? I want to know about your boss. And you're going to tell me everything. I can't do that. The organization I work for, it knows I'm here. I don't care it knows. That's the difference between you and me, Frosty. I don't have a care it knows at all. You better start talking. You're sweating. But they'll kill me. Okay. Then I guess you'll melt. Melt? Melt. All right. After we're done here, I want you to take me to jail. That's the only place you can't get me. Deal. Okay. So here it is. We pick girls up on the weekends, and we sell them at the end of the month. But on account of the increased security around this time of year, we wanted to get them out early. They're supposed to be sold off tonight. Where are they? They're at the Three P Kings Chinese Restaurant on 65th and 7th. There's a back room where they're locked up. It's owned by the Chinese Syndicate, But we keep a lot of our guys there, too. And what about Santa? I don't know about Santa. 
I rarely see him. But I know he checks out the girls every now and then. And he sometimes comes in for takeout. You wait around long enough, and he'll be there. What else? That's all for now. I need to know you're going to hold up your end of the deal. Come on. Take me to jail. It's getting warm in here. It's no problem, Frosty. Twigs behind your back. I walked Frosty out the front door, put him in the back of a patrol car, and sent him to county to be booked. When the car pulled away, I stood there on the sidewalk for a moment. It had been snowing again. There was a little dusting on every surface, like Grandma's sugar cookies or Grandpa's hand mirror. I had a chance to catch Santa, the best chance I'd ever had. I could go stake it out and wait for him to fall right onto my lap for a change. But then, God only knows what would be happening to those poor girls in the meantime. I rushed back to the station and went straight to the chief. Chief, I got some news. Yeah, me too, Holiday. Listen, about old stabbed, dead, frozen Mrs. Johnson. When we tried to notify the next of kin, we couldn't reach her daughter. It turns out her daughter was staying with her at the time of the crime. She's considered a missing person, and we're putting all of our resources to finding her. I want you to lead this investigation. What's her description? Well, she's average weight, a little taller than most, blue eyes, red hair. Hair! What? She's a redhead, right? Yeah. How'd you know that? Chief, I think I know where she might be. Spit it out, John. You know Three P Kings on 65th? Three P Kings? Of Orient Cuisine? That's the one. I have reason to believe that old stabbed, dead, frozen, smelly Mrs. Johnson's daughter will be there, along with many other abducted women. It's part of a trafficking ring. Where's this information coming from? An old contact of mine, and a former associate of Santa's. Holiday! Did you pursue this Santa case after I expressly ordered you to drop it? Yes, I did, Chief. But this is it. We've got it, and we need to act fast. Those girls won't be there for much longer. Well, get a team and get down there. But if this is a bust, John, you're done. I'll have your badge, do you understand? Yes, Chief. Thank you. Half a dozen patrol cars arrived with me at the restaurant. We stormed right through the front door. Guns drawn, we rushed to the back. Watch out! There's a kid up ahead! Not this time. Oh, God! What child is this? Officer, that was an elf. Now it's a dead elf, and they know we're here. Let's go! We breached the door, and before I could say you log, we were exchanging gunfire. Oh. Oh. I need more bullets. Bullets flew through the air, the pitter-patter of tiny elf feet scattering left and right as we lit them up like a Christmas tree. When the smoke cleared, we had dropped three elves, one Chinese, Donner, and Blitzen. The rest were taken into custody, but the only sign of Santa was his hat, hanging on a big red chair. We missed him, but we got the girls. There were seven in total, locked in a small room in the back. Among them was Jingle the Milkmaid, some of Rudolph's girls, and dirty old stab dead frozen smelly Mrs. Johnson's daughter. It was the biggest trafficking bust in the history of the Christmas Crimes Unit, and the chief was pleased. Excellent work, detective. You saved many lives today, and the department is lucky to have you. Thank you, chief. There's something else. I know I doubted you, but I realize you were right about Santa. We didn't catch him today, but from now on, you have the full support of the department to go after him. Not only is he real, he must be brought to justice. Thank you, Chief. I intend to do just that. He's good, but like tinsel to a tit, we'll find him. That's the spirit. Now let's get going. You've got a lot of paperwork to do. Thank you, Chief. I'll get right on it. Happy holidays. Yes, sir. It was Christmas Eve, and presents needed wrapping. Wreaths needed hanging, and criminals needed processing. I didn't catch Santa today, but mark my words, I will. I'll see he's put behind bars, or my name isn't John Henry Holiday. Christmas Detective. Merry Christmas. Christmas. 
And so concludes this episode of John Henry Holiday, Christmas Crimes Detective. With warm, clean, lovely Mrs. Johnson laid to rest and her daughter saved from a life of dairy work, will our Christmas dick get to the bottom of Santa's sack of madness and mayhem, or will the big man himself get away with his sleigh? Tune in next time for joy, good tidings, and murder, as our hero's path to justice gets wrapped up with the Jewish Mafia. Happy holidays and good night. <laughs>